So this morning we're going to be um, investigating the role of uh, thinking in our practice and mainly through meditation and um, but I thought I would say a, a few things first um, not very much hopefully though there, there's a lot that one can say about thinking thinking thinking's nature is to think so uh, that's what it does that's what it enjoys doing if you like um, I'm just thinking of this old story that used to go around about Bhante, uh, how he would, just someone would ask him about something and he'd say, oh, I'll think about that next week. I'll think about it on Thursday, on Thursday at, at, at three o'clock. And we would all go, wow, <laughs> how can he do that? How can he? Uh, yeah, just, just to, to, to my sort of, 23 year old brain at the time it just seemed like wow that's completely impossible he's a he's a wizard um but actually the more mindfulness practice i do the, the more it makes sense actually that, that there is some choice about uh what comes into the mind how you respond to it and um when you when you decide to to give it attention it, it is possible it doesn't mean that thoughts about that thing won't arise um but they they uh yeah they 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 don't have to sort of take over the mind in in the same way most of the time there are there are some things that do they do you can really see how they um, maybe there's a quite a strong sort of emotional triggering around something and then those thoughts thoughts and feelings thoughts coupled with feelings can really dominate our experience for for good uh, or for ill if you like or, or for pleasant it can be in a very pleasant way um, on the more intoxicated end or sort of inspired end or it can be um, really taking taking what you call taking myself down my own plug hole uh yeah yeah so thoughts are really um necessary really important uh to to life um and very helpful in our practice except for one thing and that's that they dominate they really dominate our our experience they proliferate um and uh often we're thinking when we would rather not be thinking or we're thinking about things that we'd rather not be thinking about um that that tendency to a pancha or to 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 rumination to um proliferation to obsession that that, that can cause a lot of suffering in the mind So I wrote a little sentence down here just before we started. Uh, I haven't had time to think about it, but hopefully it makes sense. It, I put, we create our future world with our present thoughts, which are based on our past habits. So it's just pointing to the condition nature of, yeah, creating our future world with our present thoughts based on our past habits. So when we follow our thoughts, when we we believe our thoughts and we follow our thoughts, um, we'll we'll if you like it, the, we'll go in a, a direction that's sort of conditioned by um, previous thoughts and previous sort of habit patterns. So mindfulness can help us step out of uh, those habit patterns because they're not necessary. Our conditioned habit patterns are not necessarily where we want to go. Um, there may not be anything that wrong with them, but they're, they're sort of set in the mould of um, Sangsara, if you like. They're set in the mould of, of uh, the realm where the main way of operating is through greed, hatred and delusion. 
so if we we want to sort of shift that mode then um, we, it's really helpful to have some way of looking what is happening at what is happening within our minds um, and uh, we've been looking at greed aversion and aversion um, directly but looking at thoughts which can be very slippery is also really really helpful So thinking is one particular mode of the mind, and as I said, it dominates. So uh, uh, mindfulness, being aware, is another mode of mind. And that mode, if you like, it, it allows us to, um, it's, it's reflexive, so it allows us to notice other things that are happening within the mind and the body. Uh, and when right view is in there as well, there's an even bigger perspective, an even broader uh, take on on what's happening within body and mind so i think one of the the things that makes thoughts quite or so compelling is that somewhere there's a view in in the mind often um, that we need and, and i think it's perpetuated by thinking by thoughts themselves it's like they're 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 sort of in a way they um you know create creating their sort of reason for um being their reason for why they're so important if you like um we think we need thoughts to in order to work things out um to particularly if there's something that's a, a little bit sort of uh on our mind and that's could be something a bit disturbing or it could be something um, interesting but our main way was sort of you know we want to work it out so that we can um, put it down so a bit like a, a dog with a bone when there are lots and lots of thoughts buzzing around something so I think a lot of our thinking is that type of what what do I do about that? How do I ca come to um, some sort of resolution with this so that I can put it down? So we, we sort of get, oh, it gathers lots and lots of th thoughts into the orbit of um, uh, and it's very sort of unpeaceful often. <laughs> uh, it's often quite sort of busy and um, yeah. And just like with with craving, what the Buddha was saying about craving that there is another way, there is another way uh, to solve our problems to uh, rather than using the thinking faculty to try and work them out. Often the thinking faculty with certain sorts of difficulties, it doesn't do that well. Um, you know, if you're, if you're trying to, my, my partner at the moment is um, converting our cellar he's been doing it for a few months and he does a lot of thinking about it a lot of thinking about the practical problems um, and it really pays off you know it really pays off you know he'll do something make a it'll go wrong so then he'll think about it and then um, at some point down the road it goes right and or good enough and thinking is fantastic in those sorts of um, areas thinking and reflecting um, but in terms of uh, our, our own um, mental and emotional processes uh, thinking is not that great often in terms of um, sorting things out it can be much more helpful to um, if you like let thinking be secondary be secondary to just being with to being with what's happening allowing it to be seen from a much more um, spacious and restful position so 
So it can be really helpful to recognize in awareness when we've got that dog with a bone type thinking uh, process going on. I have to work this out. Uh, if only I could understand uh, what's going on. Uh, what, what am I meant to be doing? What do I feel? And, and often there's sort of quite conflicting thoughts and feelings in the mind. And to be able to just be with the whole picture actually uh, can be yeah much more much less stressful and much more helpful in just seeing what's happening i think sometimes i think that the thinking sort of thinks it's uh it thinks it's the manager of the mind it thinks it's the sort of boss and uh so it's up to it to work things out um and doesn't really want interference from from anything else um you know feelings can sort of argue back uh, yeah so it can take quite a bit of awareness to in a way to recognize uh in a way that that the, some of the views or some of the things that are happening within the thinking mind um, particularly about the best way to sort something out. The, bit, the best way to sort out an uncomfortable feeling that maybe is just passing. Maybe it's just passing and if you can just stay with it, something else will arise quite soon. But we start sort of, or thinking starts sort of proliferating around it and before you know, it's mushroomed. Um, Partly this happens, I think, because we're we're identified with our thoughts. Like I can say thinking thinks it's the the boss of us, the manager. Uh, and it takes quite a bit to just sort of get awareness in there as a maybe a junior office worker, but gradually giving it a bit more responsibility, a bit, a bit more, oh right, no, actually this this can be quite effective in, in staying with uh, what's happening. This this creates less suffering. And then we get a bit more confidence that awareness can do its job and perhaps it's capable of taking a bit more responsibility. I've never used this mes be metaphor before, so <laughs> I'm not quite sure where I'm going. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're usually very identified with our, our thoughts. They're, they're my thoughts. Um, I'm thinking. Um, and um, yeah, I'm thinking important thoughts. Uh, that can be one way that we we don't like when we're identified with thinking that we um, some of our, our our spiritual thoughts we can think of as really important and then get quite attached to them. Identification, another way of talking about attachment. Um, yeah. So practicing as we're going to be doing and just allowing a thought to be a thought and not and, and recognizing the value that we might attach to certain thoughts and the um, aversion we attach to other thoughts are, are all things that can be seen in awareness. Because by with our attachment, we give a lot of um, power two thoughts uh, and sometimes th those thoughts can as I say can make us feel quite good about ourselves but other times um, you know we believe thoughts that say we're rubbish you know or that judge us quite harshly or judge somebody else quite harshly um, so they can be quite destructive our thoughts can be quite destructive but they, they needn't be. It's, it's not that in themselves they are destructive. It's just a thought. I mean, maybe it's a judging thought. Maybe it's a pretty mean thought. Um, but actually, it remains just a thought until there's that attachment or identification with it that says, oh, I'm a terrible person because I have this thought. Or I'm a great person because I have so many... Uh, 
altruistic thoughts or metaphor thoughts, what, whatever it is. And we can be really sort of rocked up and down by um, the, 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 well, the seesaw of these, um, I'm great, I'm terrible, um, and anything in between. So that's the territory that we're we're exploring really is, is by um, looking at our thoughts, um, looking to see a thought as an object, a thought arising in the mind. Um, thoughts can carry all sorts of different uh, messages, but if we, if if we're clear that it's just a thought, a temporary thing arising in the mind um, gone we usually really quickly uh, what well, Uteja Nia likes to say happening and gone happening and gone and if we can relate to our thoughts in in that with a flavor of that um, then we can find that the degree of suffering um, can can decrease quite a lot. So clearly we're not practicing here to make thoughts go away, um, but to practice thinking in awareness. Thinking, being mindful of thoughts. And sometimes that can be that thoughts are just happening in the back of the mind. Uh, there can be quite a steady stream of thoughts, but you know they're there. You, you don't necessarily um, I'll think of another metaphor. Uh, I'm probably done with my metaphors, but this was this morning. Um, but but yeah, they they can be there in the back of the mind. While um, I remember going for a walk, I was just really in this beautiful place and very present and aware that thinking was happening, and it was a new what the content was and I knew it was just a sort of chuntering away about where I was and that I was uh, enjoying being in this beautiful countryside so it's okay you, you just chunter on so in, in that sense maybe to go back to that metaphor thinking has sort of turned into the office junior at that point it can just get on with its job of thinking it's not really doing anything and it happens within the overall um, realm of mindfulness that knows what's happening, as it knows that it's it's seeing and walking, um, and all those other sort of processes. A certain it recognizes a certain amount of joy arising. Um, so actually, it's a much more balanced um, way to be. Um, you know, thinking get it's put in the place of being just another mental function another mental capacity that in the right circumstances can come to the fore and um when that time isn't right it's like well let let uh mindfulness do the job because it, it can have this this broad overview of what's happening Okay, so we're going to do a couple of um, couple of meditations around thinking. Hmm, I think I've got one more thing to say. I th I just I'm not sure that it's come through, but I just want to. Um, Perhaps reiterate the importance of being aware of thinking in relation to our attachment to um, self and uh, our view of self. Because so much of, of that view of self is, is expressed uh, internally and externally through our thoughts and through our language, um, it's quite hard to have a any sense of um, space from from that that sense of who I am and what I am 
without having some objectivity around the thinking processes or mental processes generally, but particularly thinking. Um, so I think it has a lot of potential uh, in, in freeing up um, our relationship to, to yeah, who, who, who we think we are, what we think we are. If we're uh, not strongly identified with our thoughts. I was on retreat with, um, well, it was a Buddhafield retreat I was leading a few years ago, and there was a young woman who had, um, I think, I think her teacher maybe was a divider, or I think he was a divider. Um, and he said he, 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 her name was Moon, which is very lovely. And uh, there's her teacher said to her at one point, he said, "Don't touch your thoughts." And she sort of giggled a bit nervously, and he said, "I mean it. Don't touch your thoughts." I really like that. It's like that's that's what we're doing normally. We're sort of we we we've got hold of them, or we're touching them, we're involved in them. And what we're looking to do is just be aware of them. We will know the content. We will know that automatically, but but we can know uh not just the content if we if we touch our thoughts then that's what we know we know the content we don't know the nature of the thought we don't know it's it's uh, yeah it's 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 where it conduces to suffering we don't know it's impermanent nature it's just a sort of being uh, sucked into it we don't see uh, its characteristics and we don't see the broader picture. Okay, I think I'm done now. A bit more than I expected, but there you go. Um, yeah, so so we'll sit and I'll, I'll um, talk you through first sit which where we'll use some um, mental labeling part of the mix And um, just just so you know, nobody likes being demoted. So uh, we can expect thinking to try all sorts of tricks to try and keep its its top post. So one of the, the ways we can work with thinking is um, it's a sort of intermediate 
small way where, where we give some, um, well, we give a nod to the content, but we're also working with the process of, of thoughts. So we, we start to just give a simple mental label to when you recognize the type of activity that the mind is doing. So when you recognize thoughts that are to do with planning something in the future, with an anticipating something that's, that's coming up, you can just say, oh, planning mind, anticipating. So it just helps with a, a non-proliferation by thinking, oh, that's the type of thinking that's happening. That's the, the, the activity in the mind is that of planning or anticipating or judging or comparing. So rather than being fully involved in um, usually the, the painfulness of that state of judging either ourselves or somebody else and say, oh, sometimes I'll put a just in front, just judging. Or the mind that's telling the same story again and again, repeating, repeating. Okay, but it's helpful to, to start um, by grounding quite well in our physical experience. And I'll drop in some of these, um, these labels that, that if it's helpful, you can, you can use them. You can try them out if you haven't come across them before. So you can start either just allowing that settling to happen in a very open, relaxed and spacious way without attending to any sphere of experience in particular. Or if it feels more helpful you can, you can prioritize one sphere of experience more like an object that the mind can just rest with quite gently while still being aware of other things that are happening. And either is fine, whichever you choose to do. And perhaps having a sense of which is most helpful for the mind to relax into awareness and presence.
perhaps noticing hearing happening. Or sensing into the physical body. Recognizing how you're feeling. What's the feeling or emotion? What's the mood in the mind? And it's not necessary to label that, though you can if there's a response. But just knowing, awareness, recognizing the experience is enough. And you might just notice thoughts arising into that space of awareness. And initially, you might just recognize thinking. Thinking happening in awareness. And because thoughts are subtle mental objects, we need a correspondingly subtle and sensitive quality of mind, quality of awareness to meet thoughts. A little bit like watching a, a shy animal. We don't necessarily look directly. And then you might recognize different types of thinking happening. And it can help to just give them a soft mental label. And without thinking about it very much. Just being aware of what type of activity 
the mind is engaged in. Something like planning is happening. Anticipating. When memories arise, remembering is happening. You can also label thoughts connected with craving and aversion, wanting in the mind or not wanting. And feel how these different types of thinking manifest in the body, or the heart-mind. And notice the mind that is fantasizing or spinning off into stories. Storytelling mind, fantasizing mind. And you might notice the mind that's trying to figure something out. And just seeing if it's possible to settle back from the mass of thoughts involved in is thinking things out. 
Let it be seen from a broader, bigger perspective. Lots of thinking. Perhaps thoughts, emotions, sensations that can each be recognized. Seeing thinking as a natural process in the mind, the nature of thoughts to think. And it's the nature of awareness to be aware of whatever is happening, including thinking. Awareness is not trying to know everything or know every thought. But to remain relaxed, broad, relaxed. And noticing what's obvious to it. No need to reach out or try and chase thoughts. Let them come to awareness. Receiving thinking along with the other activities of body and mind when they're noticed. And you might be able to notice sometimes a sense of how much the thought is being believed. To what degree are you taking ownership of any particular thought? And just in that way of looking, there's a degree of right view.
and notice to any occasions where the thought is known and recognized as simply a thought in the mind, a mental process can be felt and known arising, persisting, disappearing, happening and gone. So recognizing right view at work in those moments too. Those moments when we can we can let the nature of thoughts to be seen, to be recognized as an object. So we've got a few minutes if there's um, <clears throat> anyone would like to share something of uh, what you noticed or what caught your your interest or attention in that practice. It might be something really simple, moksha darshani here. Yeah. Or you're muted. 
I noticed sorting out mind, it got quite fixated on sound and um, really wanting to know which sounds were my sounds in my location and which sounds were your sounds in your location of Adria Davy and <laughs> just not let go of it's okay it's just sound it doesn't matter and it was like yeah yeah so that 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 seemed to have persist for a while but it did finally lose its energy but um yeah it was quite yeah. Observant. Yeah. yeah good good yeah yeah that that interest will will be really helpful or finding it fun um and what what can be helpful at that point and it sounds like to some extent you and actually doing that is is to rather than the if you like the op the main objects be the sounds itself you let the object of attention turn to how you're relating to the sound so oh there's that that fixed quality and perhaps there's it sounds like there's quite a degree of tension in that or oh and then maybe there's the mind that wants wants it to let go and so it becomes a much more sort of internal process if you like oh what what's happening what's happening within the field of all these things and they they can if you like become the uh yeah, so you shift, you shift the focus from sound to that relationship to experience. Yeah, great. Hmm. Anyone else? Shadasara. Yeah, I was just observing the, um, the way thoughts kind of uh, condition feelings or kind of have like the um, uh, the correspondence between between them so how yeah 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 how they kind of affect each other you know or a, yeah. or a sort of like yeah how like a a thought can then somehow it feels like have a corresponding relation to a feeling and then the other way round too yeah absolutely yeah yeah really really helpful to see that i think um yeah see that sort of conditioning relation well we're seeing um per teacher samapada in in our direct experience um we could see the way that yeah something a feeling conditions a thought and then that thought is um that can further condition it can give rise to other thoughts or it can give that then give rise to um you know perhaps the same feeling but in a stronger um mode yeah yeah really helpful to to see that um because it's all happening anyway but usually it's happening out of awareness uh, so you know we are sort of self-constructing can be going on sometimes in quite unhelpful ways and we just don't we don't see it but with awareness yeah we can be there for for the process yeah thank you anyone else karen otara yeah um a little bit the opposite for me uh, with sound i noticed that Actually, it was the bird song I think I was hearing in your in your cabin. Um, I found that very enjoyable and relaxing, and I I really sensed that. Then I was letting that flow. I, I just listened, and it flowed through me, and I could feel my body really relaxing. Felt very different to my judging thoughts or my my selfing thoughts i just really noticed a strong um difference both mentally and physically physiologically yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so so it's it can be really helpful to get the or to have both experiences actually and get the sense of what what the, in a way the suffering involved with um a degree of clinging around um you know the mind is just hanging on uh, in this trying to fit trying to work something out mode 
there's, there's often quite a bit of suffering and that sense of um yeah the the lessening of clinging when things can just move through um, yeah and, and you know like i like i love your metaphor about being the office manager the thoughts being the office manager and the other senses are much you know just prioritize so much listen so much to that thought rather than the others in a way mm. hold them, you know the others hold much more lightly and therefore they feel very different yeah 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 great yeah um yeah um something that might happen doesn't didn't necessarily sound out like it was happening this time but there might be thoughts around that enjoyment so there can be a sort of um um some sort of thoughts associated with buying into pleasure so it's just something to watch out for that might not necessarily have been happening but those sorts of thoughts can be really quite subtle and um uh and because yeah and 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 a bit harder to see a bit harder to see with them um, yeah because because there's because we like them more yeah anyone else before we have a little break Advaya Gita. um just the 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 swing between um between the bird song and the and the inner critic coming in when it's an old tape and you get that tiny little bit where um, you sort of well I sort of feel a sort of crunch in my left side of my brain and that's the, the inner critics there. And um but it, it's just a it's just a glimpse of it. And then uh, So was that I, the I, know what, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so did the inner critic sort of have certain thoughts that it was? Um, it was about I mean, the thoughts that they, these are old tapes. You're doing it again. You're going over something that you've gone over before. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. The, and there's that inner critic coming in saying, "Why are you doing this again?" Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, Just a yeah. wee, but before the words come, the the feeling. Yeah. In the head. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I didn't mention it actually in the in the thing, but that repeating l label is a bit like, oh, this is just something the mind does. The mind repeats itself. It reruns these old tapes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then yeah, very easy for the 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 judging mind to sort of, in a way, um, have have some sort of reaction to a natural function of the mind, which is the mind uh, repeating itself. Yeah, but you spotted it. You spotted mm -hmm. them both. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, have um, a little bit of a break for tea. Um, a minute. So we'll sit again. Um, yes, yeah, so, so we'll sit and I'll, I'll lead into this sit and um, I'll read something beforehand, tell you about that. And uh, then we'll just have time at the end, maybe for, for five minutes. I've just got a, another little reading that points to another resourcing type practice. So we can just spend the last five minutes or so doing that, doing that. And that practice comes from um, a Zen um, teacher, Zen Roshi, called uh, Jan or Yan, I'm not sure, Chosen Boys. 
Jan Chosen Boys Roshi. Uh, but but yeah, for now, uh, this reading I want to read, I wanted to tell you a little bit about it. So it's from um, a book uh, by an art critic and writer called uh, Tom Lubbock, who is an art critic for The Independent paper. He lived in London and uh, he was diagnosed around the age of 50 with an inoperable or, or a terminal brain tumour affecting the speech and language part of his brain, which as a, a writer uh, about art, obviously this was um, hugely significant, yeah, lo losing um, his speech, which, which he did. But he managed to write this book during the process of the illness, the, I think it was less than a couple of years before he died and, and before he died he had completely lost his um, speech. Uh, so he's, he wrote a book called Until Further Notice, I Am Alive. He had a, a huge amount of um, natural sort of buoyancy and courage and, and curiosity about what was happening within his experience. Um, right from the beginning, even though on many levels it was tragic. Uh, he had a son, I think, who was about a year when he was diagnosed. Um, you know, it's just... And he, yeah, as I say, he wasn't, wasn't that old. Um, but he had a number of reflections from his direct experience of just look at, looking into what was happening with him, um, how, how this sort of disease of the brain uh, was affecting his thoughts, his speech, uh, his, his language. And though he knew nothing about uh, Buddhism or, or the doctrine of anatta, uh, his, his reflections took him quite close to that. So I wanted to read just something before we go into the meditation. For me, no word comes without prior thought. No sentence is generated without effort. No formulation is made automatically. I am faced practically and continually with a mystery that other people have no conception of. The mystery of the generation of speech. There is no command situation. It goes back and back and back where the self lies at the heart of the utterance, the speaker generating the word is always clouded. This is true for everyone, but for most people, this is not something to think about. The generation of words is automatic. For me, that automatic link is broken. Word generation involves strain, guesswork, difficulty, and imprecision. Well, I love that line, where the self lies at the heart of the utterance, the speaker generating the word is always clouded. So in this meditation, be exploring a little bit more the, the nature of thinking. The nature of that generation of language and its source. Just giving yourself a little bit of time to 
to settle and ground within the body. And you might notice that as well as your physical senses or the sense of weight and shape and balance, temperature connected with the physical body. Perhaps there's a grounding in other senses as well, perhaps with hearing settling back and receiving sound. Nothing to reach out towards. Perhaps noticing your thoughts in a similar way. Happening within a universe of experience. Receiving different kinds of thoughts, different activities, what thinking does. And you might be able to identify thinking manifesting in different ways that perhaps a thought is not so uniform as we might have thought. So investigating quality of thoughts as they arise. And you can choose to label or not label. It's up to you at this point. Sometimes thoughts feel quite almost loud in the mind, quite intentional and weighted. Sometimes they're connected with strong emotion or strong energy lending this extra weight to them. And sometimes the thought in the mind can be more subtle. The nature of thinking feels more wispy or floaty. Perhaps little threads of thinking. So just noticing what's obvious, not trying to 
get clarity. If that's not immediately present. Just letting awareness do its job. Recognizing what it can. Sometimes the thinking can feel like a subtle inner narrative that's always going on. And perhaps in this way, the mind is like the ocean and in the depths of the ocean. There's the flotsam and jetsam of this inner connecting narrative. Floating past. remembering to look really gently out of the corner of the mind's eye. What does a thought feel like in the mind? and not expecting an answer to that question necessarily. Just allowing the question to encourage looking, encourage interest. And noticing what makes up a thought. Is it just words or images? What else might be happening? in that flotsam and jetsam, the fragments of experience that form a language and understanding. And 
that sense of, I know what I mean. Different perceptions, impulses and feelings. an inner knowing or direction. Noticing what else is happening within the mind and body. Can you notice any conditioning relationship between thoughts, sensations, feelings? or conditioned relationships between a sound and a thought or a feeling. being curious about thoughts and thinking, allowing a thought to fall apart under a soft, curious, attentive awareness. What is a thought? How do I know I'm thinking? And not looking for thinking's answer, but in experience. What does awareness know? when it recognizes that thinking is happening.
We give thought so much power, believing our thoughts. And seeing if it's possible to notice those thoughts that and where there's a degree of freedom from belief. Or where there's a clear sense of, well, no, that's true. That thought is true. Just enjoying the process of gentle investigation. Playing with awareness. And when we believe our thoughts, recognizing, asking what are they really in experience? How substantial, how transient, What is there to rely on? Just knowing a thought as a thought. Whether it's a great thought or a rubbish thought, just thinking known in awareness, known as a process of mind.
So we'll just pause for a moment and if you want to change your posture, you can do that. We'll just give the, the mind a, a minute or two to free form, free float. Letting go of any particular task or object. Letting it be. So for the last few minutes of the morning, we'll just have this uh, little resourcing practice. I'll just read you what Jan Chosen, Chosen Boys Roshi says. They say, we have to study satisfaction, simple satisfaction. Sitting and then asking, what more do I need at this moment? Cultivate satisfaction. Several times a day ask, what is satisfying right now? And people apparently grow measurably happier from doing this. So you can tune in to your own experience. What is satisfying right now? What more do I need at this moment? And it's okay if you find your mind going to other memories or thoughts about satisfaction. The satisfaction of a nourishing meal. And the satisfaction of our nourishing and wholesome mind state. And the satisfaction of a mind that's simple Satisfied with simplicity. Or content with simplicity.
And notice any moments of these qualities within your experience. And there may be others that are conjured up and noticed through this study of satisfaction.
and feel free to sit on as long as you would like. 